Greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. God's love is all-encompassing. If you hook up with Jesus Christ, you will win. Your life will turn around. He's a God of 360. He never fails. He's the God of love, and love never fails. Hello. My name is Bruce Cox, and I'd like to welcome you to wherever he leads. I have a question for you. Does God move in mysterious ways? This is the common answer that many people use when they can't answer a question that someone may have. God moves in mysterious ways. What do you mean God moves in mysterious ways? Why don't you just tell me you don't know? People die. God moves in mysterious ways. People get sick or have a debilitating injury. God moves in mysterious ways. Don't you get sick of hearing that answer? The truth is, God doesn't move in mysterious ways. His ways are simple and obvious where mankind is concerned. His great love for people is very obvious. And do you really think that God really wanted that person to die or that person to get disabled for life? Do you really think that he wanted that war to break out? Do you really think that he wanted that earthquake to happen or that flood to happen? The answer is no. He didn't want those things to happen. If you had someone that you really loved, would you want any of those things to happen to them? So why would you think anything less of the Lord who loves you beyond comprehension? In fact, he did everything he could do to prevent those things from happening. But man made a choice. People made a choice. They chose to reject God. It is the arrogance and the deception of sin that causes those things to happen. And it is very obvious, so mankind condemned itself by choosing sin. People condemn themselves. They made a choice. They chose sin. They chose their own way over God. They said, no, God. We're going to do it our way. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. God's ways are so obvious and simple that we overlook them. We don't see them. Think about what Jesus said in Matthew. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, rest sounds good. <laughs> you know, if you think about it for a minute, I mean, we work our tails off every day. You know, and we have so many different things we have to deal with. And Jesus says, I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Or what he said in the book of John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is obvious, and it's right in front of us. God's invitation to us to come to him through his Son, Jesus Christ. He paid the price for us. He became sin for us and took our punishment. And he not only took our, took our punishment for us, he defeated death for us. He defeated death for us. So that even though we die, if we have Christ, if we have Jesus Christ, 
And we've given our hearts and lives to him and invited him into our life and said yes. Our bodies may die, but our soul will go to heaven to be with the Lord and we will rise again. We will be resurrected from the dead. On the day that Jesus comes back, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who are alive and remain shall caught up to, together in the, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the promise that we have. It's written down in writing. It's a written guarantee from the only one who never lies. God who cannot lie. He wrote it down for us. And he made it obvious. He made it easy. Listen to this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Take a look at these things and consider them. This is very simple. There is no mystery to it. No mystery at all. It's just, it, it's right here in front of us, okay? It is laid out and simple and easy. All we have to do is receive him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever, now you're included in that, by the way, because whosoever is whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Whosoever. For this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who shall ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it, but the word is very near you, in your heart and in your mouth, that you may do it. It's obvious. Does God move in mysterious ways? He makes it simple for us. He makes it easy for us. Because he wants us to come to Jesus. He wants us to come to him through the blood of Jesus Christ and be forgiven for our sins. He wants us to repent. He wants us to set aside our unbelief and say yes to Jesus. He wants us to be alive with him. You know, not too long ago, Billy Graham went home to be with the Lord. And God bless him, and God bless his family, and Franklin Graham, and, and every one of them, and the efforts that they made. And God established Billy as, you know, one of the greatest evangelists the world's ever known. I mean, I was watching uh, Dean Martin uh, celebrity roast, and Billy Graham was on there. God caused Billy Graham to be able to sit down with presidents, you know, to sit down with kings and rulers. I mean, he preached throughout the world, you know. And now Billy's gone home to be with the Lord, and guess what? He will rise again. Jesus Christ will raise him from the dead. And anyone, anyone who knows Christ will be resurrected. When Jesus Christ makes the call, Billy Graham and everyone who has ever said yes to him, the dead in Christ will rise first. Because when Jesus died, he went to hell in our place, and he defeated death for us. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead. A real living person. I mean, the evidence for Christ, the case for Christ is overwhelming. I wish you guys, you know, if, you're, if you ever get a chance, watch the movie, The Case for Christ. It talks about Lee Strobel. And what he went through and the research that he did. You know, as an atheist... And he ended up giving his heart and life to Christ. 
And I was fortunate uh, recently to be able to see one of his sermons in person. And this man, he researched it. He, he took it down. He asked the questions. And the answers were right there. They were obvious. And he knew that Jesus Christ, this, this Christ, this man called Jesus Christ was real. This man called Jesus Christ was alive. This man called Jesus Christ was dead. And this man called Jesus Christ is alive forevermore. A real living person. A man who sits at the right hand of God. His name is so common. God gave him a name above all names that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And the name of Jesus is used throughout this world, sometimes in not so good a light. But the name of Jesus is common. And this happened 2,018 years ago. Think about that for a minute. 2,018 years ago, Jesus Christ was crucified. He was buried in a tomb. There were guards put there to guard the tomb. The angel of the Lord rolled the stone away from the tomb and Jesus Christ got up and walked out. Over 500 people saw him. And today, people sing songs about him. They praise his name. They meet in congregations throughout the world. And they give their hearts and their lives to him, even where they're forbidden to do so. Even where they're getting killed because they said yes to Jesus. You know, I, I picked up something in the news today. Listen to this. The Bible appears to have been removed from online marketplaces in China as Beijing clamps down on how its citizens practice religion. China has always controlled sales of the Bible, only allowing it to be distributed and printed by state-sanctioned churches, but in recent years, it had been available to buy online. Now they've taken it away. And yet people are still saying yes to Jesus. People are still inviting him into their hearts and lives. You know, I have a friend of mine who has a ministry in the Ukraine. They go over, they minister, people get saved, people get healed. People give their hearts to Jesus. They're hungry for Jesus. I have another ministry over in the Philippines. He goes out and thousands of people come to Christ. Thousands of people invite Christ into their heart and life. It's amazing. So this man, <laughs> he lived 2018 years ago. And, it, you know, logic says that, you know, this should be like ancient history. Yeah, something we read about, you know, maybe. Of course, they don't allow you to read about it in schools anymore. <coughs> they threw the Lord out. Threw out prayer. You can teach any other religion, but you can't teach Christ. You know, and, and knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is not a religion, it's a love affair. A personal relationship. You know, and they wonder why the school, schools and things are happening to the schools that are happening. They wonder why the kids are, you know... Things are happening with the kids that, you know, we just can't explain it. But listen to this now. And I just, I found this today. To the North Koreans gathered beneath a crucifix in an apartment in this northeastern Chinese border region, she is known as mom. 
She feeds them, gives them a place to stay, and on occasion money. In return, the 69-year-old Korean Chinese woman asks them to study the Bible, pray, and sing hymns. She also has a more ambitious and potentially dangerous goal. She wants the most trusted of her converts to return to North Korea and spread Christianity there. Along the North Korean border, dozens of such missionaries are engaged in work that puts them and their North Korean converts in danger. Most are South Koreans, but others, like the woman, are ethnic Koreans whose families have lived in China for generations. In recent years, Ten such frontline missionaries and pastors have died mysteriously. According to the Reverend Kim Kyo Ho, head of the Seoul-based Chosen People Network, a Christian group that runs a memorial hall in, in the South Korean capital for the victims, North Korea is suspected in all those deaths. Hundreds of other missionaries have been imprisoned or expelled by China's which bans foreigners from proselytizing. The government of China doesn't want foreigners to come in. He doesn't want us to go in there and share Christ. You know, the government. Okay? It is perilous work. A Chinese human rights lawyer whose work defending Christian pastors and farmers had prompted repeated death threats died on February 26th hours after being admitted to a Chinese military hospital for what his relatives described as a minor stomach ailment. Throughout history, from the time that Jesus died and rose again from the dead until today, the servants of God and those who brought the word of Jesus Christ and those who shared the good news of Christ, many of them, many of them have been persecuted. Many of them have been put to death. Jesus was crucified. Stephen was stoned. Now these people trying to share the gospel in China and North Korea are getting murdered. You know, Christians are being beheaded by ISIS. And Jesus said this would happen. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, he said, Then they, they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Jesus said this had come to pass. Now why, you know, if, if Jesus' words weren't true, If his words weren't true from this Bible, why is this happening? Two thousand and eighteen years ago, two thousand and eighteen years ago, Jesus said these things. And they're coming to pass. And you know what's interesting? They've been coming to pass for the last 2,018 years. He said the gospel would be preached throughout the world. It's being preached on the internet. There's a ministry on the internet right now. Big outreach ministry, outreach ministry has several websites. And people all over the world, I think it's like a million a month, are giving their hearts to the Lord are asking Jesus into their hearts and into their lives. Another ministry that I know, you know, from the first of the year, had over 25,000 people receive the Lord already this year. And they go out, you know, and, and talk to people face to face. It's amazing. Now, you've got to ask yourself the question. Are these people crazy or what? Are, you know, I mean, this is history. No, they're not crazy. Jesus Christ is alive. 
The Holy Spirit, the comforter that Jesus said he would send, is here. And he's convicting people's hearts. And he's showing people that Jesus is real. He's showing people that Jesus is alive. And he's showing people that salvation is here for you. And all you have to do is say yes. Invite him into your life. Commit your life to him. Repent of your sins. What good those sins ever do you anyway? Nothing but hurt you. Nothing but cause you regret. You know, and he paid the price for him. He bled for him. So, so I ask you the question. What are you going to do with Jesus who's called the Christ? What are you going to do? Are you just going to keep on going on with your life and saying, ah, I don't need it? Or are you going to listen to your heart and listen to the Holy Spirit right now who's speaking to you? Who's speaking to your heart and say yes to him. Because you know, you know in your heart this is the truth. Now you might want to argue with it. You might want to say no to it. But you know. You know it. And you can feel it. You know in your heart that this Jesus is alive. You know it. Doesn't matter. I'm going to say something to you. Are you Buddhist? Do you think you're going to come back as a cow? No offense intended. Um, are you Muslim? Do you think that if you die and you do all the right things in your life, you're going to get 12 virgins? You know, um, are you like think you're going to go to Valhalla like the Vikings used to think they would and, you know, what have you? Are you an atheist and think you're just going to go in the ground and dissolve? Are you an agnostic and say, well, I, I, I just don't know. I, you know, I mean, I don't know about this God thing. I'm going to ask you the question. Who's going to cover your sins? How are you going to cover your sins? What are you going to say? What are you going to say when you stand before the Lord and you find out everything that's been presented to you is a fact and you will find out? What are you going to say when you denied that drawing on your heart right now? And as many times as you've heard this gospel and you said, no, nope, it's not real, God's not real. I haven't seen him face to face. What are you going to say? Well, I just didn't know. When it's being laid out before you, when it's so simple, when it's so obvious. And I don't mean to be offensive. You know why? You know why I say these things? You know why I'm sharing this gospel with you? Because the Lord loves you and I love you. I care about you. I don't want you to go to hell. The Lord doesn't want you to go to hell. You know, I don't want you to, to die. You know, I mean, death is a horrible thing. And I'll tell you what, even though, you know, people know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I mean, somebody that I love passes away, it's still, it hurts. You know, now my Bible guarantees me that I'm going to see him again. But that doesn't change the fact that I hurt. That doesn't change the pain. You know, when I see some of the atrocities that happen, or the things that happen to children, you know, and, and the things that happen to adults, I mean, it hurts. I'm not going to lie to you. It freaking hurts. I mean, the scars, you know, they're there. But sometimes the pain just, it comes. You know, and I get sad. 
You know, I've lost some people that are very, very dear to me, very close to me. And I know I'll see them again. But right now, you know, it hurts. Like when my dad passed away. He prayed with me and received Christ. You know, he's alive with the Lord, but he ain't here with me. And it hurts. You know, it, and, and those of you out there, I know there's, there's people you've lost. And it hurts. That's why God sent Jesus to defeat death. You know, so listen. Set aside everything right now. This is your time. You know, now is the time. Today is the day. The Bible says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So right now, right where you're at, the word is near you. It's in your heart and in your mouth. And that's the word of faith which we preach. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It says, for with your heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that means you. So right now, just talk to God and pray this prayer to him with all of your heart. You say, Dear Father in heaven, I come to you right now, and I admit to you that I am a sinner, and I ask that you forgive me for my sins. And I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior. I'll live my life for you, and Jesus I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Thank you for my salvation. And thank you for forgiving me for my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you received Jesus, you've become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Ask the Lord to take you to the church where he wants you to be. And share with someone that you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And take your Bible and start with the book of John. It'll give you a solid foundation in the faith. And thank you for joining us as we follow him wherever he leads.